So in this video, we're going over the resize. Now we use we put so we put down a SOP geometry. Uh, where are we at here? And what we do? Oh, let me pause here. Oh, I thought something was broken. I tried to fix it. It broke it. It was working in the in the <laughs> anyway. So sorry about that. All right. So SOP resize geometry. So what we get here is. Once we activate this, we can see a primitive coming in with every box now. So it's important to note that smoke object zero has one primitive, and that's because we have primitive group right here. So the first box is getting the first primitive, the second box is getting the second primitive. So it lines up. So we dump this into the resize geometry, and this is normally, it comes in with this as default. Uh, the position data path. Now if I leave it at default, I get this. Don't want that. That's bad. I want that. Okay, so now that we have this geometry in place, let's look at how I'm building it. So basically I'm building a custom carve. So I'm gonna try to walk through this. It was pretty confusing, um, but hopefully I communicate it well. So what it's doing is it is basically connecting this up as it goes. So to walk over this code, I am getting the position of the missile. So as you can see, that's point. Uh, the first input, which is here, uh, this guy right here, and the zero point, because there's only one, so I know which position to grab. So there's the missile position and I should actually rename this missile position because uh, that is just better better code and so the length between the missile and each point I'm going to turn these points on I want to cal calculate that as length so if the number is less than the total amount of points so this basically, I do this to exclude the last, pardon me, the last point. I want to check if the missile is ahead of the current point, then the path point. So these are the path points. This is the missile. And on here, I'm checking if the missile is ahead of it because it's calculated at the, where did we, we calculate it right here. And so we're just using it and we put that right here. So that's just the dot product of the normals. So if the missile is ahead, let's template this again, we want to get this value, the prim length. And so what this is, this is the distance of the point to its neighbor. And then what we do is we calculate a position where it's basically what we're doing is we're normalizing it. So we're finding out the distance, you know, from the current, the closest last point to the missile. And then we divide that distance by the prim length, which is the point, the distance between the point and its next neighbor. And then so that allows us to interpolate a position, which we put here, it, to know where this missile corresponds in between these two points. Now, if the length is greater than the primitive length, what we want to do is, oh, well, first we, we create a primitive, all right? And so the way we do this, add prim, and then we keep it open as a polyline. All right, so now we got to put points in this primitive. So if the length is greater than the primitive length, that means it's past its even next point. That means that if he's here, the, here's the template point right at the bottom of the hand, it's past the length of this first primitive here. So what we have to do is we need to add vertex. So add the points to the primitive um, add myself and add my neighbor. Now, if I'm not, if that distance is lower, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point. And so that's the point right here. 
that's very close to the missile. And then I'm going to add that point to the primitive. And I'm going to add myself to the primitive. So that gets this, the, the carve effect right there. And I think that's it. And then so as you can see, this path builds. And I have nine primitives. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, and there's a ninth down here, but it doesn't get read in. So going into here, we bring that in. So every one of those segments is its separate primitive, and so it gets read in by the object ID. So to recap, you know, we see the geometry, but this all these geometries are in a separate each one of these segments are, is in the grid that's below my hand right here. That may be hard to see. And just to double check on the data, right there. The You can see smoke object 0 has one primitive. Smoke object 1 has one primitive. That's done by the object ID. Very important. All right, so the next is the resize. And it's it seems like if I just plug it in, it works. So it's pretty much that. Uh, you use the track object and dot. You point to the dot data and then you give it the resize geometry which is right here. So every object, this is running over every object and it looks at its own resize geometry and then it tracks that in. So it's it's pretty cool. And this basically just controls the width or like how big the box is. So you can see what I do, what I'm doing there you know so I shrunk it and so I put it back up to 20 and there we have it and so there's the resize bounds that is the resize geometry that's calculated from that one primitive and what we have is we have these boxes oh I'm gonna reset because that looks like a mistake that's nothing to worry about reset the sim and as you can see there's the boxes building all right, so I'll just wrap up the last part that's important is the sources. When you're sourcing this in to the Pyro Solver, it's very important turn the instancing off because you want one source going through all the boxes. So if you have instancing on, it's going to look for an instancing attribute and see what box corresponds it. So you don't really want this, not for this one. And so that is very important. Instancing needs to be off. And that's pretty much the setup. And so to recap, this is this is what it looks like. And so I might wrap this up into an OTL, but this is how to do this kind of effect. It was it was a good challenge and it was a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed I hope you enjoyed learning. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to get in contact with me and uh, I'll I'm receptive to all feedback. So have fun Houdini-ing.